Good day, warm welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, this is a webinar a lot of you had, uh, have asked about. So welcome to the webinar about the fellowship program, the OMF program. And now we will introduce ourselves. So my name is Omar Ra. Uh, you might have seen me in my other two webinars about the Osmos platform. I'm an OMF. Uh, and I'm from Israel, but I'm studying in the Czech Republic, and I'm a fourth year medical student. And now we have... Um, hello, I am Shristi, and I am a second year medical student. I'm Indian, actually, and I'm studying in Philippines. So, nice to meet you. Hello, my name is Joy, and I'm a Kenyan medical student. I'm a final year... So I'll be finishing medical school soon. Hello, everyone. I'm Santiago Calegari. I'm from Bogota, Colombia. I study at the Universidad de los Andes. I'm a, and I am a fifth year medical student. I'm very happy to be here. Awesome. So we have a few things to talk about. We will talk about what is actually an OMF. Uh, what are our values, which are a very, very uh, big part of our community and the part of being OMF. What opportunities and uh, things you'll be doing and can do as an OMF, which is, I'm guessing, what you are all very interested in. We'll introduce uh, shortly the team of the OMF, a few personal stories from us, and your favorite Q&A. So... You'll be seeing QR codes uh, on the top right. If you scan it with your phone, this QR code will be to, um, to register to become an OMF. So if you're interested, you can even just take a picture of it and do it later. And just like a very cool, easy way to get there. So what is an OMF? An OMF means Osmosis Medical Education Fellow. So this program, OMEF, is for medical students. It is a community program, meaning it's a group of students together. And we all also call it like the OMF Familia because it's a very warm and very community-like uh, program. As I said, it's for students who are using Osmodus. So in order to become an OMF at the moment, you need to either have an active prime member or have had an active prime member of Osmodus. Who are we looking for? Passionate and motivated students, uh, just like the four of us, who want to help their fellow classmates study with Osmodus, just want to help them become better doctor, better doctors. Not afraid to try new things, and we will talk about that in a few minutes who share our values, uh, the values of osmosis, which I will also show you in the next slide. Um, should have, not necessary, but it's always good to have some leadership slash mentorship experience. If you don't have that, it's also okay. Not all of us started uh, the OMF program with uh, this experience, but we have gained it thanks to this program and five hours weekly. We want this webinar to be upfront. This is from student to students. So we know how much medical school takes, how much time it takes. So we want you to know what you are getting into before you sign up and before you apply. So it's about top five hours weekly. It can vary, it can be more, it can be less, but it's like the average of uh, what we think. And as I said, prime. And of course, we are an online program, as you saw, as you've heard, we are all from all over. So most of our meetings and discussions are online. So you have to have some good Wi-Fi. The semester. Uh, so spring semester is January to early April, fall, August till November. Okay, our values. And here I will uh, do something we do in our weekly meeting, monthly meetings, sorry, of the OMF program where we ask if someone has seen one of the values in the wild. So I'll ask my uh, colleagues if they have seen 
Uh, our values as an osmosis is imagine more, open your arms, have each other's back, reach further, spread joy, and start with the heart. So in our monthly meetings, we always ask in the beginning if someone can share a value he has seen in the wild. I'll go first. Awesome. Yeah, so uh, basically we had our exams recently and a lot of us basically flunked or did not score that well. So our uh, faculty, one of the faculty decided to take it upon himself to teach us personally, even if it, uh, even that when the topics weren't his. So I think that comes in, have each other's back and uh, spread joy. He is funny and I think I, we basically all love him. He's kind of like the best faculty ever. So I think it was a big deal that he took it upon himself to basically make us study harder and explain each of the topics. So yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Shirsty. And I think we'll move on. But this is something we do for a few minutes and it's always kind of warm up and nice to hear about nice things uh, either we did or someone else saw happen and noticed. So opportunities, the main thing we're going to discuss here in this webinar, we're going to talk about uh, the events we host as OMFs for our fellow classmates, blogs we write. You might have seen them uh, through Facebook, Instagram, or the Osmosis blog website, the OMF Familia, and skill building sessions. So, events. Um, okay, that's me. I'm going to be talking about events. So, basically, in uh, the program, events are mandatory. You have to do at least two per semester. You can do more if you wish to do so. So, it was a very new territory for me. Uh, and that it makes you basically pause before actually wanting. You want to apply, but it makes you pause because it's so new and you don't know how it's going to go. It's foreign. But that's the very reason to do it because it helps in improving upon self to become better speakers and to interact better, which is important, especially, uh, especially for us medical students. You also learn to basically promote yourself like so people know who you are. You can also use, uh, there are a lot of uh, applications or uh, you can use Canva, you can use social media. And at the same time, you can network. So it's, you can broaden your circle. People know who you are, even though they are not in the same college as you. So it also, it's a big deal uh, if you are interested in joining uh, in school activities or be head of uh, or join student council groups. Uh, the other part is uh, choosing the topic. So it's like it can be anything. It doesn't have to be uh, related to medicine at all. Uh, one of the panelists, Joy, uh, she had some very fun events. One of them was on a videography challenge. So it's like it's not uh, necessary that it be medicine related. So you can choose anything under the sun. And uh, so I'll... I think Omar will show some of the pictures of an event I had. So, yeah, I was really scared before starting out. Even I asked Omar to help me out because I was so scared. I'm an introvert, basically. But I did events where I kind of uh, promoted it. Uh, like, I advertised my events and everything. So, a lot of people came and I had a really good event. And I think I'm a better speaker now. So Omar is also happens to be an event extraordinaire. So if anyone of us is clueless, uh, we, we have got you covered. You don't have to worry at all. Awesome. Thank you, Shrifty. And our next speaker will be Joy. Yes. Um, so concerning the blogs, I personally really enjoyed this part of the OMF experience. First, we need a necessity is that each one of us writes one blog and it's not as scary as it seems. It's not a term paper that you need to submit. <laughs> it's, um, I'd like to think of it more of sharing your experiences with people all over the world. I just recently read a fellow OMF um, who wrote about his experience with depression. So there's a myriad of topics you can talk about and this will improve your writing skills. Um, as well, it's something that you can add to your CV um, and also 
the topics as i mentioned are interesting based on your your likes you may like to write about your own life experience you may want to interview somebody with faculty at your university or even interview a fellow omf and ask them how their experience has been or share your clinical experience so lastly there is the influencing aspect of it where you get your own personal osmosified picture which i absolutely love you can see mine at the bottom screen there and um yeah and it gets to be posted on the osmosis blog so i think umar can show us the two examples of blogs that i had previously written which were what being a musician taught me about practicing medicine and how to cope with a patient's death in medical school so this is just an example of a clinical experience that you can share and also your own personal medical school experience and it also can introduce you to the field of narrative medicine which i think you should look out for from osmosis um because it helps you even internalize your personal medical school experience more so it's definitely something to look out for once you become an omf and not to think of it as a scary experience but one where you get to share your your views with all of us thank you thank you joy and if you want to check out our blogs just type in google osmodus blogs and you can also there look for joy there are always wonderfully written and very very uh, interesting to read our next speaker will be santiago hello everyone so i'm going to talk to you a little more about our monthly meetings so our monthly meetings we have actually um, one per month two optional dates and as you can see with joy and trishti really the omf programs goes much more beyond helping us improve academically but as much as tries to inspire us at each opportunity and we and we also try to reach further that it's also one of the osmosis values the monthly meetings really is one of the the main the main things we do at osmosis and as omfs that help us because in here we can we talk about new projects we talk about mental health strategies we talk about improving our academic skills and really much much more uh it really help helps us get inspired in in every in every meeting and also discuss very interesting topics that we face as as med students all around the world and we also get to know key osmosis members and really doctors from all around the world which help which who help us face our challenges um we also have one thing called theme months that are kind of fun so each month we we have like a specific topic so for example we have one month dedicated to volunteerism we have one month dedicated to referral codes we have one month dedicated to to many things and in each month we have winners and we have like specific winners and that really helps us to inspire and get motivated because we can see what the others achieve and we want to also achieve the same things in our community so really the omf program helps us to improve not only like our skills and everything but also try to do reach more and reach further so for example we have some specific examples in the next slide so we can see here uh example of four meetings that we have we have one meeting called finding a mentor and getting strong awards that was with dr rishi De rishi desai which is the chief medical officer at osmosis and we talk about the importance of finding a mentor during med school and also about how to get an award which is sometimes not that common depending on your country and that is very very helpful to get to know we also have a, a talk with dr sara morman about creating communication and focusing the disabled community and that really is awesome because it helps us not only in, in our clinical practice but in our day-to-day -day life we also have one one meeting in which we talk about alternative career options after medical school because many of us face 
many, many different challenges after graduating medical school. And it's important to imagine more and try to focus and really learn to face all the new challenges that arise. And at the, also we have one very interesting uh, topic of, about time management with Dr. Amina Sam, which help us, who help us to organize our day-to-day -day life and try to focus on the most important things first. So as you can see, really, our monthly meetings really help, helps us improve in many, many ways, not only in academic skills. So this is one of the most awesome opportunities we have at the OMF program. Thank you, Santi. And the OMF community, that is me talking now. So uh, I really, really like the OMF community. Even some of us call it the OMF familia and for a good reason. Uh, so in this community, we do work mostly online, which is why you need to have a good Wi-Fi. We work on this website called Slack, which is just like more like a work Facebook. So we have channels. So we have a channel for all of the OMFs, and then we are split into teams. Every team has a regional lead, which is the point of contact. So for instance, I'm a regional lead and also Santiago. I'm the regional lead of Team Cardi, which I actually have Thrifty and Joy in my team. And these team channels, uh, we give, we give uh, weekly updates, uh, ask if anyone needs help with uh, setting an event, writing a blog post. We have discussions about medical topics, about just hobbies. We ask questions to get to know each other. We share photos. So it's just it's like really creating this nice, warm, also work environment, and just like also getting to know people and medical students from all over the world and seeing how it's different, also the same. We're all stressed from exams, for instance. Uh, also, we have topic channels, which I love. Each regional lead is leading a uh, topic channel. For instance, I'm leading a travel channel. So once a week, one of us posts. Uh, about either where they're from or somewhere that really cool they want to travel. We start, share some photos, we share some tips. Uh, so it's also really fun and kind of makes you feel like global community. So I, I get tips and now I have also couch surfing friends from all over the world. We have also tea time, which is something that was actually created uh, now during, during this pandemic. We all really, really needed some um time to see people even if it's online because you know COVID and at the beginning of the quarantine so we started this tea time where we all had a cup of tea and we had uh, this close environment to talk in a video chat about one topic either mental health studying in the UK working in the UK um, just any topic you someone want to lead you just made a tea time added to our calendar and people just joined and we discussed the topic he wanted to uh, also, coffee breaks, which is once a month. Anyone who wants can enroll into it, and we are split into pairs. And then we just need to find a town, time to chat over coffee or something or tea. Uh, it's just another way to get to know your fellow uh, OMFs, to know other medical students from all over the world. This is also a great opportunity to make connections, not just uh, couch surfing, as I said for me, but also global connections, because these are future medical students who will become doctors. Sorry, not future medical students. They are medical students who will become future doctors. So this is actually a great opportunity to make connections if you want for research or for other projects. So the, a few examples, this is on uh, the Slack, as I was saying. So you can see on the left side, my team Cardi, we have announcements, events, regional leads, we have a team and a travel channel. We have um, books, we have for blogs, for personal projects, for text prep, or if you want to find a study buddy or ask questions, you can ask there. As Santiago was saying about the themed months, we had a volunteering uh, month where we had this uh, fun bingo where we tried to volunteer and have a bingo. Uh, Shrishti was one of the first ones who got a bingo. Uh, she did a lot of things. 
And it was just like a fun way to motivate ourselves to like, do, do things we don't normally do. And this is from uh, my last Team Cardi meetup. We had like a 30 minutes fun meetup. We just talked about different things and it was uh, really fun to um, get to know more of my, uh, my colleagues from, from Osmosis. And there are so many more things. We don't have time to go over all of them, but I will briefly try. At the end of the OMIP program, if you do two semesters, you can get a letter of recommendation. You can practice your English skills, which is always useful. You can test a small features and give feedback. You can learn awesome tech skills, like I became a Zoom master. We also learn how to use different uh, online tools like Canva, it's just like website to edit stuff and to make cool posters. We also learn how to use Slack, so really tons of tech skills which are always, always useful. Uh, focus group and feedback about the Osmosis features and product. Uh, sometimes we have some special ad hoc paid jobs, that's also some nice pocket money. And you can research with fellow OMX. If you have a research idea, you're doing some research and you want to exchange or have a group for it, you can always talk to the community and see who wants to join. Personal stories. So this is kind of our time to give you a bit of a short anecdotes. So first, why did I become an OMF? Okay, that's my cue. So um, when I first read the form, basically, and uh, the part where they said uh, what they were looking for, I wasn't sure if I should apply or if I'll apply, I'll get in. But I was excited because it, it was a big opportunity. So I decided to go for it anyway. And when I got in, everyone was so helpful. It was like a big family. And especially I, uh, I should thank Omar and Santiago both because they helped me a lot with my e events and everything. So yeah, it's like a big family. And it's also a great opportunity to interact with uh, people from around the world. Because if I hadn't joined, I don't know if I would have get to know such wonderful people from across the globe. And also, you get a letter of recommendation, which I think is very important uh, in some countries. And finally, uh, I do not regret it because I think I haven't achieved it yet, but I'm pretty close to overcoming my fear of public speaking. So yeah, that's me. Thank you for sharing, Christy. Uh, I'm next. I'll try to keep it under a minute so also we don't go over time because I know you're all uh, busy bees and we're all, we all have exams now. So how did being an LMF affect my studies? Uh, I think in two, in two very big ways for me. Uh, first, uh, hearing in the monthly meetings how uh, what everyone else is doing, how many projects they're doing, how they're studying, uh, volunteering, doing research. It really keeps me motivated hearing all of the awesome accomplishments of my friends from the OMF program. So I'm always motivated to do more and take on more stuff. And also, at first, it wasn't so easy to be an OMF and to kind of schedule my time studying and also being an OMF. But it kind of forced me to look at my schedule again and reevaluate and really uh, when I have time to study, study and kind of reschedule, reschedule everything. And now, it, it, now it's it's uh, very, very easy, but it forced me to reschedule. So it, it actually helped me study better. Uh, third personal story, what will I take away from my time at home? So there are many things that I will take away from my time when I was an OMF. Actually, I think that's one of the best parts because Probably my story will be different from yours and probably my main takeaway will be different from yours because that is the idea. The OMF program let you grow, lets you grow in many different ways and the way you choose, you will grow a lot in that way. For example, I think my main takeaway would be to get to know people from all around the world. Really, the opportunity, for example, when I work with Tristi, when I have worked with people from Jamaica, from from Asia, from Europe, 
from Africa really is awesome. It's, it's an awesome opportunity to get to know people that is just like you met students from all around the world. That is really a unique opportunity you, ca- you have when you are a nomad. And the last question is, will I do it again? And that is a big yes from me, because as has been said by my fellow panelists, it has been the global aspect of the program and just meeting people from all over the world, as well as pushing yourself. Shishti has talked about getting public speaking skills. Mine (laughs) has been interacting with people from different places, understanding their perspectives and their systems, and as well going into deep discussions on the Slack. It's not an in-person meeting, but it feels like it. And we've called it the Ome Familia for a reason. I would definitely do it again. Thank you all for sharing. And everyone who's listening, if you have questions, keep writing the chat and we have a Q&A in the end. So don't worry. Um, the team, you will get to know them uh, if you do join the OMF program. Uh, but mostly you'll be talking, uh, communicating with the regional leads, your other OMF uh, friends and with uh, Vicky, Victoria. She is the community manager here. And a quick photo of the regional leads. Um, They do change. As you can see, um, I'm like in the middle here. I'm the regional leader of Team Cardi and Santiago of Team Papi. Um, Most of these will probably stay, um, just just to show you some nice uh, nice pictures of people. Okay, we're almost done. Uh, Thank you for those who are still here with us. For reals, so some info from us to you to summarize. Time management, it is about five hours weekly. It can be a bit less, a bit more. This is the average that we came up with as people who are doing the OMF program. Um, among all the opportunities, other opportunities are to become a future regional lead, like me in Santiago, uh, to receive a LinkedIn and PDF certificate of completion and a letter of recommendation, which is always useful. Expanding your network. As I said, you will get to know OMFs from all over the world and also as well as team members. So these are, they can be very, very useful uh, networking opportunities for you. And um, as we said, as I said, there is some um, cash compensation. If no, no, none of us really join because of the money. Also, it's not so much as we can like you know, live off of it or something. Um, it is nice as some some like pocket money, but the program is slowly becoming less and less about, about cash compensation and more about other things like the letter of recommendation, networking, certificates, uh, and a lot of other things that we said. Okay, so. Thank you all for listening. The Q&A will start in a second. Just a small shout out for our next webinar, a discussion around LGBTQ health and why it's important will be in uh, June 3rd. Uh, you can enter our raffle to in three months our smallest prime with filling in the feedback form. If you scan this QR code on the top right, uh, it's really one minute. It really, really helps us become better for the next webinars. Uh, if you've been to the previous ones, you see we do read them, we do go over them and try, try to improve. Follow us on social media and Q&A. So I'll stop sharing the screen. How do you apply to be an OMF? Trusty? Um, yeah, uh, I think maybe the person who asked this missed the first few minutes of the meeting. So Omar had this uh, QR code. Uh, if people have taken screenshots of it, you can use, you can scan it and uh, it will take you to a form uh, wherein you just have to fill it up and uh, just answer the questions and everything. And that's it. And you can, I think you can also fo- uh, find the forms on uh, Instagram of the Osmosis account and other places. If you, I think even on the Osmosis main website, you can find that. Uh, 
some. Um, what activities are done weekly? What exactly are the activities uh, behind the five hours per week? Joy? Well, as Omer, Omar had mentioned earlier, it's the five hours depends on how you organize your time. Um, but there's the set things that you need to do within the month. For example, um, if planning your event and hosting an event, um, going and checking on the Slack channel for the weekly updates, as well as interacting with people on Slack, and also participating in the challenges or the coffee sessions, which are around 10 minutes, 15 minutes, depending on how long you decide with your virtual coffee mate. Um, also attending the monthly meeting, that's around one hour. Um, and there are two of them held um, depending on the time zone you're in at a time of your convenience and also filling the monthly survey. So those are mandatory that you'd end up doing within your month and it would depend on when within your schedule you're able to do them. So that amounts to the roughly five hours weekly. But there are also other things that you can do above that, which is posting on social media, that could also take some time, doing a blog peer review or writing a blog, and also mentoring other people or sending spread joys. You know, that that takes small bits of chunks of time. So as, as you said, it depends on how you organize yourself, but it will be roughly the five hours. Thank you, Joy. Um, so until when is the registration possible. Um, applications are always, uh, you can always in, uh, and enroll, you can always apply, but if you want to participate in the next semester uh, of the OMF program, which starts in August, then we do encourage you to uh, apply in the next few weeks. So we can also look at your form, get back to you. Uh, these things do take a bit of time. Next question. Um, if I am an international medical graduate, but I am already a graduate and I enroll, if you mean if you have finished your studying and you are now a doctor, then congratulations. But this is a um, medical student program, so we do look for students. Uh, but thank you for asking. Um, is it hard to get into the program? Uh, Shrifti? Uh, yeah, I don't think it's that hard at all because if I can get in, I mean, so can you because uh, the requirements are pretty simple. I think all of us can apply and be accepted. I think if there are no limitations, I'm not sure about the limitations part. So yeah, it's not hard at all. Awesome. Thank you. Um, should I have an Asmodeus Prime account? I come from a developing country. I cannot afford Asmodeus Prime. That is a very good question. Um, for now, mostly we do ask for Asmodeus Prime so you can have experience. But if the situation did not allow you, in the future, we are going to expand it into a scholarship-based program. But um, it never hurts to try. If you uh, apply even without having it, even if you just tried the two weeks trial of Osmosis, you can still apply, write your reasons, write why do you want to become an, o an OMF, and you might still get accepted. Uh, so I would recommend to, to try. Um, mm -mm. For universities that are in lockdown due to COVID-19 and the opening date is not specified, what sort of activities by the OMF members are expected? Uh, Shristi. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, my video was off. Yeah. So uh, since we are in lockdown, uh, I think uh, when I joined, uh, it was lockdown all around. Uh, so the events are online, uh, mostly Zoom-based. So uh, I don't know if they were ever uh, on a face-to-face -face kind of events. 
Uh, but since I joined, that's how it's been. And the other requirements are like blog writing and uh, and attending monthly meetings. So you can do that at your home. You're not required to go outside. So I don't think it's like it's going to be a problem. And uh, other activities, I think it's up to you to do. The mandatory ones are completely uh, lockdown friendly. Thank you. Um, okay, I think we'll. Okay, a few more questions, and we will finish. So, last questions. Uh, how many OMFs are currently enrolled? How many new OMFs do you accept each semester? So, applications are open now. Um, rate of acceptance kind of varies uh, with how many applications we receive and the quality of the applicants. So, really, there's not like a cap limit. Um, deadline to apply is July 28. Uh, so you still have time, no worries. Um, and if you think you want to join, if you share our values, um, why not give it a go, fill out the application form, give it all you got right from the heart, and you know, we'll see from there. Um, I believe some unis have uh, strict on advertising third-party companies through events. Are there any alternative to hosting two events that are a small theme to overcome? So as we said, this is not to um, like shove a small list. This isn't to make people buy a small list prime. That's not why we are OMFs. We're also wonderful students. Um, you can always, some of us even host events with our student organizations. We also do volunteering events in our universities. I myself did a mental health event in my university. Um, so these are events you can also do, or even like a drawing, uh, like a, this chill drawing, drawing event that also can be in a smallest themed event for your uni and your friends. Um, Recording of this meeting uh, will be in a couple of days um, in the um, this platform. You can just keep on the left side, you go to the events and you can find there a recording. Um, if you have any more questions, you can always also ask in the feedback form or our Instagram, social media, and we'll answer back to you. I think this is the majority of the questions. Okay, I would say, last question. Is this a volunteer experience? Uh, please elaborate, Shrifty. Um, I know actually it is not a volunteer experience because volunteering would be uh, selfless. Like uh, it's, you're not getting anything out of it, right? Uh, but in uh, the OMF program, you get a lot. Uh, so there is a lot of uh, benefits. You get incentives and everything. So yeah, uh, when it, uh, I think maybe you uh, might be referring to the volunteerism uh, challenge we had. It was not mandatory. We did it by our own choice. It wasn't supposed to, like, it's not mandatory that everyone does it. So it's completely up to you. So yeah, it's not voluntary. It's more like, uh, learning experience awesome and on that note thank you all for joining and for staying here with us and for all these questions um, if you have any more questions please feel free to ask in the feedback form or social media please do fill, fill the feedback form also you can enter the raffle and also it really really helps all of us to make better and better webinars uh, and that's it Thank you for joining.